What is the story on Story Avenue? That, that is a question I've been asking myself since I was a kid. I grew up in the Bronx. I grew yep. up right near Story Avenue. And every yep. time I would pass by, I would literally say I would as it was the corniest thing in the world. <laughs> and little did I know there was actually a story to be told. Yes. Um, and you're telling it. Now, yes. where, did, where did this great idea come from? You know, it it, it started off as a short um, and it's not, you know, I'm not Kadir. I'm not a graffiti artist. I've never robbed anyone, but you know, I know what it's like to be artistic. I know what it's like to feel alone. I know what it's like to feel like you're meant for something greater than what's in front of you, but you don't know where to begin. And that's really how it started was just, you know, having the opportunity to tell a story that was true and authentic to the community that raised me that could make us all proud. That's, that's incredible. This you messed me up though. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I love the yeah. movie. By the way, I don't know if I, I emphasize that enough. I really enjoyed this movie. Oh, thank um, you. And uh, I'll talk. We'll talk a little bit about the performances in a minute. But mm-hmm. you messed me up at the train stop because when I saw the Story Avenue train stop, I was like Story Avenue. And then I saw. I think it was like on the sixth line. I was like, "There's not an actual train stop, is there?" And now you had me on Google Maps, and I had to like, yeah. I had like four different screens pulled up. I was like, "Wait, is this real? Is this fake?" So it's a fictional train stop, right? You can confirm that. <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, what was the reasoning for that? Did the story feel so grounded in reality, but at the same time, there are some like, um, I guess like hyper fictitious elements, like the, the opening, uh, our main character is like floating off the ground. Mm-hmm. So does this story take place in real life? I don't know. I asked you that. You know, that's it's a question for you to answer, sir. <laughs> well, I, I I feel I, I feel mixed. I feel like it a part of it is, but it's also through the the lens of a teenage boy who, you know, there are there are certain things that you take for face value when you're a teenager, those things that you probably shouldn't, and then other things that you 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 don't take for face value that you should. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I I appreciated that kind of like um blend of the real and the fiction uh but what what was the story behind having it set at a train station on story avenue specifically where did that idea come from i i grew up on metcalf and story ave so it that there was a personal connection for me there i thought there was some duality with you're watching a story and it's called story Ave. so i thought that was a slick title and um you know at least in my world, the St. Lawrence stop is the Story Ave stop. Um, it's a stop before Parkchester if you're coming from the city. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, I think, I think, you know, being creative is a weird blend of, of realism and magic of like some ideas you can quantify and some things without getting spiritual or just like plant it in your brain from a higher power. And that was one of the things that were just planted in my brain as a higher power. I like it and it works. And Hey, yeah. maybe down the line you could do a pitch and it may, maybe it should be, I think St. Lawrence is a ridiculous name anyway, but maybe it should be called story Avenue. Um, there you what's, go. what's the stop before St. Lawrence Morrison Soundview? In other words, too long. Let's, let's condense it. You know, no, I'm no <laughs> um, Louis Guzman. Oh my yeah. God. A career yeah. best performance from this man. Every time I see him, I just, you know, I get the, the sense I want to laugh. Uh, um, I just want to laugh when I wa- see him in something. So I'm in his great movie, Puerto Ricans in Paris. I don't know if you're oh, so, funny. So, so funny. funny, so underrated. Oh. And yeah. you know, I, I thought watching him now, I was like, this guy needs to be in like more lead roles. You give him the opportunity and you churn out such a wonderful performance from him. How did you do it? How did he get involved? Louis, you know, there, there was only one character that I wrote, for for an actor, you know, and that that was Louis Guzman. So there was never a question about that. Um, And he was the first to be attached. Um, And just, you know, not only, you know, through this process of making this movie, doing press with him and traveling, I mean, he's really become a Theo of mine. And he's just an amazing person. I mean, we were supposed to shoot this movie in 2020 and then COVID happened and one of our financiers went bankrupt and we lost so much money and Louis went and found more money and like, He's just a really sweet guy and and honestly, just like the heart and the backbone of our little family, you know, um, just very selfless, you know, with changing in front of people at the diner with like a blanket up, like 
just a really great and humble dude. And he kind of set a precedence to everyone else on the set of like, you know, we're here to work, we're here to be humble, we're here to tell a story, and we're gonna our ego aside to do that. And everyone adapted that that ethos immediately from day one. Another big name attached to this. Um, I, I, I love Melvin Gregg in this. I love Desante Black. Uh, but you had behind the scenes Jamie Foxx as a producer. How the hell did you get him involved? Insane. Um, yeah, so I met Jamie through his producing partner, Jatari Turner. Um, I saw a film, Sundance, in 2020 called Nine Days that just rocked my world. It was my favorite film at the festival that year. It's by Edson Oda. And Datari was one of the producers on that. And, you know, it was really important for me to have as many people of color around me, especially in an executive decision-making role, you know, to help me craft the, this film that has to be authentic, but also has to be emotional. Um, you know, so to see that Datari had made so many films that I loved. It, it was a no brainer to approach him. And he was so annoyed by the script and my vision to tell it that he was like, not only do I want to produce this, but I think this is something Jamie, you know, him and Jamie start to, started a new company called Foxhole. And he was like, this could potentially be the first movie that Foxhole produces. Um, and through the grace of a higher power that ended up being the case. Wow. That is yeah. incredible. For that. Uh, talk, some, talk about like Hollywood connections. You really don't know who the hell you're talking to, who you're going to meet. That is an insane story. Uh, also loved Nine Days, by the way. That's my favorite film of, of 2021. It came out. Great film. Great film. Great. Uh, Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so wrapping up here, I know I know you're a very busy man, right? It's, but you're probably going to get a lot of buzz from this movie because I think it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to get a lot of traction. I'm convinced anyway. And at least I, I, I'm putting that out into the world. Thank you. The The film spoke to me personally about like the pains of growing up and how easy it is to get misguided. What are you hoping that audiences take away from it? You know, whenever I make art, whether it's a still or a moving image, you know, the first thing I ask myself is, you know, how can this piece of art challenge the viewer and challenge the world around them? You know, I hope that if you're from the community, you're proud of the way that I depicted the community and the people that inhabit it and from it. I hope that you can, um, you know, not believe these negative stereotypes of the Bronx, just bullshit. I hope that you walk out of the theater and see a graffiti tag. Your instinct is like, oh, my God, that's an artist expressing himself and not necessarily vandalism. I hope that, you know, if you see someone sleeping on the train, your instinct isn't that's a bum. Um, you know, sometimes people just get put in situations that are out of their control. So those are just the things that I really wanted to fight for. And I wanted the audience to feel when out of the theater. And I did, I did, man. I really, I resonated with all that. Well, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, like, so it's not a lot of movies about graffiti. Literally. I think the only one that comes to mind and I might be wrong here, but wild style is like the yeah. only other so like what 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 does it mean to like what what were your influences for something like this like um yeah talk to me about like how, how do you go about because it's not easy to make a film about art because it's mm -hmm. like you know it a film itself is art and you you need to be able to be able to capture the, the the graffiti the paint in a proper light like talk to me about like some of that thought process like what 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 were some of the things that you thought about or that you were conscious of and that you used from other films to go into this yeah, well, I think specifically in the sense of depicting art and graffiti, I, I understand my responsibility. You know, even though you've seen graffiti in other movies, you've never explored the subculture the way we do on an emotional and technical level. And I knew that that level of discovery audience came with a responsibility, you know. Um, so I was really lucky enough to work with amazing graphics that are considered prophets within their own world, like Dread and Say and Hera from Heracoot. Um, and then on an emotional narrative level, oh, um, Gus Van Sant's Good Will Hunting and Finding Forrester and Boaz Yakin's Fresh. Um, these were the movies that like I watched 20 times while writing, writing the script. And not that I wanted to copy that or make a derivative of that. There's just certain tropes that are associated with coming of age stories. And I wanted to understand them at like the highest level. Um, so that way I can make it unique within this world. 
Wow, that's awesome. Aristotle, I think I'm out of time, uh, but it was a pleasure picking your brain on this film. I wish you the best of luck with it. I cannot wait to see what you do next. Um, a, a very fresh voice, I could tell, coming from you, so it would be interesting to see. But, you know, what, what you could come up with if it's like a sci-fi horror film, you know, those, those are just yeah. my preferences, but... Uh, um, yeah, dude, uh, congratulations on the movie. Congratulations on, on the success so far. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, like I said. Take care. Thank you so much, man. Have a great day. You too.